Well, hello there. This is John. I hope you guys are all doing all right out there. Yesterday, I made a theremin. I took the transistor radio case, cleaned it up last night, and, and uh, repainted it. And I'm going to do the whole circuit once again because when I put it together yesterday, it did not work. You know. And that's not a big deal. If something doesn't work just because you build it, just think, operator error, try again. You will succeed at some point. So let's get after it. Does it work? I think so. <laughs> All right, this is a much nicer diagram here. What we've got is a 1.5 double A battery. Use as many as you want as long as it's 1.5 volts. You can put them in parallel for length of service or whatever. But what's happening is the negative part of the battery is connected directly to the 8 ohm speaker there on one of the terminals. Also, this line goes from is joined there, it's soldered, and then it jumps over this line, they're not connected. Or does go up to the emitter of the 29, sorry, the 2N3904 transistor. The positive side of the battery goes to a switch so you can turn the power on. When you close the switch, the electricity will go to the collector. It will also go to the photo cell resistor. And depend on how much light goes through that that controls how much power goes to this transistor and goes there's the base there that's the controller the base the collector and the emitter here we have a 0.2 microfarad capacitor that is the plus sign if you use a polarized capacitor i'm just using what did i use i think i used just signal capacitors and that worked fine well how does this theremin work as you can see, the circuit for that light sensitive theremin consists of only five components. When no light illuminates the active surface of the photo cell, its resistance is very high and so C1 capacitor remains uncharged. During the initial condition, both transistors Q1 and Q2 are turned off. They're just off. The resistance of the photo cell is lowered when the light strikes its active surface and when this occurs, capacitor 1 begins to charge. At some point, the charge on capacitor 1 becomes high enough to turn on Q1 transistor. This, in turn, causes Q2 to turn on also. Current from the battery then begins to flow through the emitter collector junction of Q2 and the speaker voice coil. When C1 is charged to below Q1's turn on voltage, it turns off Q2. Since Q2 transistor is only, it's only on for a brief fraction of a second, the net result is an audible click from the speaker. So long as the sensitive surface of the photo cell is illuminated, C1 will begin to charge again and the process will continue and a series of clicks will be produced. If the light on the photo cell is bright enough, its resistance will become so low that C1, the capacitor, will charge very rapidly. This results in a rapid succession of clicks which merge together into a con continuous audible tone. So that's how that works. Since the operating frequency of this circuit is directly controlled by the light intensity at the photo cell, it is ideally suitable for novel electronic musical applications, which I'm sure I'm going to use. Indeed, you can actually play this device with your hands. Yes, I'll show you how we do that. <laughs> Another way is to block the ambient light from the photo cell and another way is to darken the room and use a flashlight to play the device. Anyhow, yeah, we'll try both of them see how that worked. And since the device is played similar to a radio frequency theremin, I call it a light theremin. 
Now then the tools that you will need would be a pair of wire strippers, of course a pen to draw the diagram, a little pair of cutters there, a Phillips screwdriver for moving things around, and a soldering iron, like this, nice soldering iron with a readout on it, and a solder sucker for when you make a mistake and a pair of helping hands and this is all you need you start where you need some kind of case to hold your project i'm using an old transistor radio case there's the the back that's the front you'll need a perforated circuit board here and you'll need a couple of transistors one of which will be a 2n 3904 and the other one will be a 2n3906 also we have a capacitor and i'm putting two together just to make one so i don't have the actual the actual size and the next thing that we need is an on off switch which i've attached to the case here and this is a light sensitive resistor so the higher the light intensity is in front of this which will be there that's it there the more electricity will allow through so we've got a switch a light sensitive resistor and here we have a speaker for sound and a one and a half volt battery so basically that's all you need so i've stuck the components in this perf board here just stuck them in there, I haven't, I haven't soldered them yet, I'll show you the secret of soldering. So you put them through and you've got these long leads sticking out. Now the next thing to do is, once we get all the components in, we're going to solder, solder, solder and then cut them off so it doesn't make a mess. Okay, I've got a little bit more light on the job here to help out. one make sure that they sold the floors and you don't use too much okay time to put some solder on the switch switch wires here get these wires looking good get them covered in solder flux core solder that would be There we go, and then we'll go to the battery, to this side, and then we can put this guy on there like that. Then I can put a little bit of uh, poly shrink on the end of that. Racing car or motorbike. Now this. Now this.
It's almost it's sometimes it's almost and it's, it's not so bad not so bad that oh I think so, I think so. I think so. I think so.